Corinne uh, Bernard and Alvin Reyes, and they're going to be uh, uh, presenting a story overview. Please welcome them and uh, let's give them a round of applause. Hey everyone, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Corrine. I'm a product manager here working with Estuary Protocol Labs. And to give you a little bit of background about Estuary, it is a reliable way to upload public data to Filecoin and pin it to IPFS. And you can find it at estuary.tech. So the outline for today's presentation is as follows. So firstly, we're gonna go over the problem of centralized storage, why Estuary, how Estuary works, a thousand foot view, how do developers use Estuary, Estuary's performance, and then the future of Estuary. So the problem of centralized storage. So centralized storage now um, is owned by only a few storage companies. And this means it's owned by like one entity or an individual. So this causes big problems. If that one entity decides to go down, you're no longer able to access your data. And another really big issue with this is that um, it's not even accessible worldwide. This is because there's limited amount of data centers. Also, these certain um, services like cloud services um, are the ones that are in charge of this. So they're the ones that um, have like the certain storage entities. And again, it's not accessible worldwide. So they're actually having a monopoly over that storage. And they're the ones that are able to dictate pricing and make it sky high, determining who can access the data and where across the world. Now, Filecoin is actually a solution to this because it is using a decentralized storage model. And with this, this allows for an, an open market for storage and for a peer-to-peer -peer network. And what I mean for a peer-to-peer -peer network is actually between a client and a storage provider. Now, a client is an individual who wants to upload their data, and a storage provider is someone who's able to provide that service. And it is an open market because the storage provider is actually able to set their own pricing for their storage services. Um, so in comparison to a centralized storage model, you only have a few of these cloud companies, but now in the decentralized model, you have multiple different storage pr providers that you can choose from. And these clients are also able to shop around based on different pricing or like um, how close they are to themselves. And how this actually works with Filecoin is that the storage provider has to perform a cryptographic proof to ensure that they're storing the data correctly. And this cryptographic proof is put in a block to the network and yeah. And also to ensure that the data is accessible worldwide, the deal between the client and the storage provider um, of getting that data there is actually replicated six times to ensure that, it's, that it can be accessed anywhere across the world. So, why Estuary? Now, to use Filecoin, to upload data to Filecoin can actually be a little bit difficult. This requires you to spin up your own IPFS node. And that, first of all, requires a lot of know-how and computational power. So this is where Estuary comes in. Estuary itself is a specialized IPFS node. It takes care of all the computation for you. It is hosted by yourselves here at Protocol Labs. And basically what it is, is a broker between the client and the storage providers that you're trying to store your data with. So let's say you're the client and you want to upload your data. All you have to do is talk to Estuary and say, hey, store my data for me. All it does is taking care of um, that end for you, automatically is finding the six storage providers to conduct that deal with. Now in the meantime, while it's trying to conduct those deals, your data is actually pinned to the Estuary specialized IPFS node for hot retrieval. And once the deals are made, eventually cold storage um, will be available as well. And again, how this works is like, you've already just been told what a CID was. And basically what happens is every single piece of data has uh, that CID. And the CID is put onto the Filecoin network. And this is really important for retrieval later on for your data if that pin to Estuary was ever lost. Here's just a little more of a complex diagram of how Estuary is like actually working. We're onboarding data through different shuttles. And again, it's bring, all that data is going to storage providers and those storage providers can later on apply to become miners. So yeah, there's just a little more complex diagram there. 
And yeah, this here, you can see there's a lot of things actually going into the estuary um, node itself. And it's actually using two protocols. It's using IPFS and Filecoin. So it's quite complex. And if you want to get into it, you can look at the code base yourself. Everything is open source. But if you're a developer and you just want to build a simple app, this is probably not the best option. And you can just use this. This is s3.tech. This is our web UI. Super easy to use. All you have to do is drag and drop your files and it automatically will start making deals using Estuary. And you can check out your deals in the Deals tab. Uh, again, on the web UI, estuary.tech. Um, yeah, so here you can see your deal status, your miner ID, um, it usually starts with an F, so who exactly you stored your file with, the proposal receipt, and also the Filecoin deal receipt. Now this Filecoin deal receipt has a lot of important information. Uh, it has, again, the miner that you stored your data with and the CID. So this ID is super important for retrieval, as I said before, so I'll give you an example. I, in a traditional pinning service, let's say, um, that's how you would retrieve your data. You have the pin, you're able to retrieve it. But let's say, what if this pin was lost and um, for whatever reason you accidentally removed it? You're no longer able to retrieve your data. Now this is the beauty of Filecoin. Um, since that CID was already put onto the network, um, you're able to ask any storage provider, hey, I need a CID, can you go ask around for me and get it back? And that's kind of how it works because it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. You're able to retrieve your data even if you lose your PIN. So that's pretty great there. And again, S3 makes uploading data to Filecoin and replicating around the world a five minute problem. This is because that deal between the client and the storage provider is replicated six times. So this is great because what if a storage provider decides, I don't really wanna be on the network anymore? You say, well, you still have five other storage providers that you can get your data from. And again, you can access it everywhere. Um, so let's say again, in a centralized model, you only have a few data centers. Now this is no longer a problem because you can just say, you can just go onto the network and ask from anyone um, there. So we actually have a visual representation to show you how this can populate across the world. So here's us right now. Here's the Filecoin storage providers. This is Estuary who's able to talk to the storage providers and these are the deals that are being made. And now you can see this can replicate more and more and more. And there you go, you have access everywhere. And now Alvin is going to talk about how developers are able to use Estuary. Yay. Okay. So, so no Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alvin. I'm a software engineer, uh, primarily working on Estuary. So I guess I'm going to give you an overview of how to use Estuary for if you're a developer, if you're working on some data center for mission critical application. So I guess like Corrine mentioned earlier about the power and awesomeness of Estuary. So whenever you upload a file using Estuary, it replicates this data six times across a Filecoin network, right? So it's sort of like when a client, there's a client, you upload a file, you use Estuary, and then Estuary facilitates and manages all of these replications and then put them on a Filecoin network. So it's very powerful when you're building sort of like a mission critical data centric application, especially because it's replicable and it's also verifiable, right? Using this content addressable storage of a file coin. So, uh, so before we like, you know, we deep, we go to the examples of how to use SRI as a developer, it's, it's, it's also important to sort of have an architectural overview of, of the components of SRI. So in SRI, there's three main components. So the main node, which is the, the main estuary node that, uh, that pins all of these CIDs, all of these files. The shuttle is sort of like an aggregate, so it aggregates all of the CIDs that it then transmits to the Filecoin network. And the front end, which is like what, what we, what uh, Corinne has demonstrated earlier, wherein the clients can just upload the file easily and then grab all of the CIDs and then use it for their application, right? So as I mentioned, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, uh, create six deals replication. So six replications means it creates six deals, Filecoin deals. So meaning it actually communicates with miners, stores all of these CIDs to these miners, and that makes it retrievable from anywhere in the globe, right? So 
so of course, like Estuary was built with API-centric design mindset, meaning all of these features and functions are all accessible via HTTPS endpoints. So all of these, like uploading a file, listing all of the files, creating collections, and even uploading or even uploading a car files are all accessible via HTTPS endpoints. And then we did build a few, uh, and then we did build a few tools to, you know, to easily integrate all of your applications to, uh, using Estuary. So here's a few examples of how to upload a file. Mm -hmm. So, so as you can see, like this is a, this is this, everything, uh, this is, you can also see this on a documentation website, but uh, you can see uh, you, you, you only need to call uh, and the endpoint, which is slash content slash add, and then you need to pass the authorization, the better token, and then you're good to go. Like, you know, you can upload the file there and then you, you SRI will take care of all of the replications and all of the aggregations of those CIDs. So another example is, of course, if you're uploading a file, you, you, you want it to be retrievable, right? You want it to list it. You want to grab all of the files that you uploaded. So you just need to, you just, so you just need to uh, call this endpoint, content slash, slash content slash list, uh, passing, the author, passing the authorization key as well, and then you'll get your, you'll get your list of files, right? So similar with car, car upload. So you can actually upload a content addressable archive through the endpoints as well. So similar process, you, uh, you can uh, uh, call the slash content, uh, add dash car, pass the authorization header, and then you're good to go. Everything is going to be set. So everything is facilitated through Estuary node and the shuttles. So all you need to do as developers is just call these endpoints. So similar thing, so we, there is a collections API. So it's essentially a tagging mechanism. So if you have a file that you want to upload and you want it to group it together, right, like a hashtags for your files, you can use the collections API for it. So this is sort of like an additional feature uh, to add metadata to your files. And uh, on the front end, there is a way for you to verify your CID. So once you've uploaded your files uh, via Estuary, you can actually verify your CID. And this will use, this will uh, look up the file through the web link or the ipfs.io domain domains. So more examples, so once you've uh, gone through the documentation, you'll see all of these endpoints. Uh, there's collections APIs. Uh, since since Estuary is making deals with file with the Filecoin network miners, you will have access to some of the deals API, uh, miners API, so just a list of storage providers. Uh, of course, uh, admin system API. So these are the things that you can uh, you can do basically uh, once you have access to these uh, to the uh, to the HTTPS endpoints. So of course, like we don't want you guys to just to just uh, call a curl or wget or just use uh, you know a programming language operating system level execution uh, module. So we built a few tools for you like SDKs and libraries. So since these are just HTTPS endpoints, so we sort of like created some wrappers uh, specific to programming language, the modern ones and the most uh, used ones. Uh, we have Java SDK, we have a JavaScript SDK, we have Rust, Python, C Sharp, and we do have a few shell scripts. And Estuary as an open source, uh, open source technology, the, all of the tech components are actually accessible via GitHub, but we built a Docker images so that you can spin up your own environment, right, spin up your own Estuary environment. So we also have a Swagger docs. So if you're familiar with Swagger, it's essentially a API documentation tool. But other than that, it's a, it, you can actually use it to generate client and server stubs. So for example, um, if you are building a Flutter uh, mobile application and you want to integrate your Flutter app with Estuary, you can grab this JSON file here, Swagger JSON file from our repository uh, open it on the Swagger code generation tool and generate the client stub here, like the Dart SDK, which is like what, what Flutter is using. Right. So, uh, of course, like for you to have access to the API endpoints, uh, right now it's only for invite. So I know if, if you're going to build a solution during this hackathon event, you would need to request an API key so that you can access the endpoints. So everything is on the documentation website and once you've requested your invite, you can actually scan this uh, QR code here if you wanted to request right now. Uh, but uh, if you do later, we'll send you the link. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, you'll have to request an, a, uh, an API key invite. All right, so SRI is open source. So anyone can grab the source code in our GitHub 
Uh, and we do have infrastructure code, we do have Docker images that makes it easy for anyone to just spin up their own environment. So, you know, you can, uh, if you're thinking of building your own sort of port or clone estuary so that you can provide storage and you can leverage on the Filecoin network, um, you, you can f feel free to just clone, fork and extend it for your own functionality. Uh, and then, yeah, you're, you're good to go. Everything is open source. Yeah, so uh, every information here uh, about the developer, documentation, APIs, uh, and every guideline is available in our docs.estuary.tech. So scan that, you can scan that QR code to, that will redirect you to the website and uh, everything, every guideline is there. Uh, we do have an ecosystem-dev group on Slack. So uh, uh, it's five to six software engineers working on Estuary right now. Um, and uh, our team is always available in ecosystem-dev group. Uh, and of course, uh, if you come up with an issue or if you have some time, if you wanted to contribute to the estuary, which is part of Protocol Labs project, uh, you, you can always go to our GitHub repository and uh, you know, create an issue or solve some of the PRs, right? Or create a, or raise a PR for any fixes that you want. Yeah, uh, and then that's it. I'll give the floor to Corinne for the performance. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Estuary performance. Great, okay, so we have 18 million total files uploaded by all users using the primary node. We have 165.93 terabytes of total pinned IPFS storage for hot retrieval, 102,530 active storage reels on the Filecoin network, 971.59 terabytes of total sealed storage on Filecoin, including replication, and 176 total storage providers receiving deals from our estuary node. And this is the trend since April 2021. So this is showing the amount of onboarded data to the Filecoin network. And as you can see, the trend is increasing. So we're uploading lots of data. So this is great, um, continually increasing day after day. So yeah. And now to touch on just the future of Estuary to wrap it up. Um, our goal is to make it easier to onboard data to Filecoin. So right now, um, Estuary is actually going through a redesign. We're trying to spruce up like the web UI. We wanna make it better, easier for everyone to use. So that's one of our priorities right now. And we wanna be able to onboard more data and users. An example of some users are here listed below. But when we talk about onboard more data, we also wanna be able to onboard data in like larger upload sizes. So right now we're kind of limited at 32 gigabyte uploads like per upload. So we want to really stress test Estuary to find out where are the problems with that specifically and to try and get like larger uploads um, to Estuary. Again, we also want to expand projects using Estuary and broaden our network of storage providers. We want, we want to get more online deals. And then we also want to improve auto retrieve. So auto retrieve is actually our top priority right now. And this is the service that's really completing the picture of like retrieval. So right now, um, if you lose your pin, we kind of want to be able to get your data back. So that's exactly what auto retrieve is doing. It's about 95% of the way there and we're really close to having it completed. So again, that is like the top priority in the, like the next month or two months. And it's really, yeah, it's really, it's getting there. So we're almost done with that um, for the retrieval portion of Estuary. So yeah, that's everything. Um, here are, is my contact where you can find me. If you wanna ask questions about Estuary, go to ecosystem-dev on Filecoin Slack. And if you wanna use, if you wanna see the GitHub, go to application-research slash Estuary. And if you just want more information on Estuary in general, like documentation, wanna use it, get an invite, go to estuary.tech. So yeah, thank you everyone. <laughs>